On today's episode, Tesla's chief designer Franz von Holzhausen went on the Ride the Lightning Tesla podcast and dropped some huge chunks of information on the company's new Cybertruck as well as a new Tesla Roadster redesign project. We recently got a little bit of insight into the design process behind the scenes at Tesla thanks to an interview dropped by the Ride the Lightning Tesla podcast on January 15th. In it, Tesla's chief designer Franz von Holzhausen talks about several upcoming projects, mostly the Cybertruck in detail we haven't heard from Tesla in quite some time. Von Holzhausen is an industry veteran, having worked since 1992 for companies like Volkswagen, GM, and Mazda. He's been working at Tesla for about 15 years and has been the driving force behind almost the entire Tesla lineup. The Model S, 3, X, and Y, as well as the Tesla Semi, and of course, the Cybertruck are all part of Von Holzhausen's impressive portfolio. You might remember Franz Best as the guy who hit the Cybertruck with a sledgehammer and then proceeded to break the unbreakable window with a metal ball. And in the interview, he goes into some detail about the processes for not just the Cybertruck, but also their upcoming second generation Tesla Roadster he and his team are designing. Franz was understandably a little tight-lipped about the Roadster and a few other things, but buried in the discussions about Tesla's various vehicles, we got a great glimpse of the company's design strategy. So, let's dig into the details. Are you ready for the best podcast experience of your life? Well, look no further than Raycon's wireless earbuds. I recently discovered the podcast Smartless with Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and Sean Hayes, and let me tell you, these earbuds really brought the experience to the next level. The hosts are all incredibly funny in their own way, and the format of the show with only one host knowing the special guest makes for a truly engaging and entertaining listen. But with Raycon's high quality audio and noise isolation feature, I was able to fully immerse myself in the podcast and really appreciate all the subtleties of the conversation. Whether you're a podcast fanatic or just looking for a high quality listening experience, Raycon's wireless earbuds have got you covered. And with the added convenience of eight hours of playtime and multiple sound profiles to choose from, you'll never want to go back to your old earbuds again. In terms of sound quality, Raycon has you covered with a range of options to suit your preferences. Choose from pure sound for the perfect clarity, balanced sound for an all around performance, bass sound for those who love a strong beat, or even even toggle between noise isolation and awareness mode depending on your needs. Raycon is able to offer high quality audio at half the price of other premium brands. It's no wonder they have over 50,000 five-star reviews. Whether you're listening to music, a podcast, or an audiobook, Raycon's everyday earbuds have got you covered. And as an added bonus, use the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash teslaspace to get 15% off your purchase. Don't miss out on the ultimate earbud experience with Raycon. Podcast host Ryan McCaffrey wastes no time diving right into the topic of the upcoming Cybertruck. Using the vehicle's display in the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, McCaffrey discusses the unique nature of the Cybertruck's stainless steel body, comparing it to the DeLorean a few times. It's not a terrible comparison, the DeLorean was one of the most recognizable stainless steel clad vehicles ever produced, but Franz seemed keen to distance the Tesla pickup truck from the failed 80s sports car. Now, Franz doesn't deny that the DeLorean likely came up during some design meetings. It's hard to do the sort of research that design demands without looking into one of the most iconic stainless steel vehicles, but he says it wasn't a direct inspiration. The biggest difference is that the DeLorean made use of stainless steel body panels, while the Cybertruck uses a stressed skin exoskeleton and structure, making its exterior act more like an airplane rather than a car. The Cybertruck's body isn't the standard brushed finish that you'd find on most stainless steel products. Cosmetic items like wristwatches, kitchen appliances, and the DeLorean make use of that type of finish, but Tesla wanted something tougher. The finish on their truck is what allows for so much resilience. Not only was the finish designed to cut down on reflective glare from the shiny truck, but it was also made with scratch resistance and repair in mind. 
We all remember the unveiling of the Cybertruck back in 2019, and the interview brings that up here, as Franz was the guy who famously took a sledgehammer to the side of the show model on stage, putting a small scratch in the door. Franz laughs while saying, if you look really close, you can just see it. And he says that while the stainless steel is incredibly tough, the Tesla design team made the finish to be fixable at home by Tesla owners. In fact, the integrity of the Cybertruck's body is so important that Franz said the discussion of whether to create options for color tinting or paint were also thrown out fairly early on. It follows along with what Franz says is the design philosophy of the Cybertruck, putting the hardest stuff on the outside. This is a great confirmation of what Tesla fans have been guessing at for some time, as stainless steel is typically used for just that sort of resilience, but we just didn't know if it would be possible for a Cybertruck owner to simply scrub out a scratch like other stainless steel. After that, the conversation quickly covered how Franz feels about Tesla competitors in the electric truck space. Tesla is oddly not the trailblazer for that particular market. Rivian, Ford, GMC, even smaller companies like Canoe are already crowding the space. But Franz says this is a good thing. It shows that Tesla's mission to push the industry towards electric is working. And given the specs of the Cybertruck, he says he's confident that Tesla are still the leaders in this space. The subject of the conversation swerves off towards other products after that, with McCaffrey making mention of the next-gen Tesla Roadster project, a prototype of which was apparently sitting right next to the two as they talked. On this project, Franz was more tight-lipped, but while he said he couldn't give away any secrets just yet, he did mention that if you're wondering about the capabilities, you should be thinking of what a leap forward the Model S Plaid was and extrapolate forwards from there. The Model S Plaid is the fastest vehicle Tesla has ever produced, so that's quite the boast. But Franz said that while he's working fairly regularly on the Roadster, it's just not a priority for the company right now. Tesla is focusing on a mass production of more accessible vehicles in their push to electrify the automotive industry, and making new luxury sports cars just isn't at the top of the list for design work right now. But he did say that he and his team do work on the Model S more or less constantly. He specifically mentioned that his work lately has been with the UI of the vehicle's dashboard infotainment system, but he also touched on the manufacturability of the vehicle. So that built into Franz's thoughts on Tesla's design philosophy. While speaking about how much time he spends on the Model S, Franz also acknowledged that this is a strategy used for almost all the Tesla vehicles currently. When asked about the Model 3, for instance, and what he would change, Franz said that he really couldn't think of anything specific because he and his team are making constant improvements to that vehicle. Design iterations, the versions of specific elements of a vehicle, are frequently updated. McCaffrey noted that there have been at least four seat changes in the Model S, for instance, and the infamous yoke steering wheel in the Model S and X have been recently updated to allow for a more standard wheel if an owner wants that option. Steering wheels are actually a really good example of how Tesla changes and updates their design all the time as they get user feedback. The yoke, for instance, is so popular that they've included it in the Cybertruck's design. And the capacitive controls, the force touch scrolling buttons on the newer Model 3 and Y steering wheels will be continued as well and modified according to user feedback. These new buttons are designed to remove that stock on conventional steering wheels that controls the turning signals and windshield wipers. Franz said, this change was made because the designer saw a need. Older cars with mechanical switches on the wheel and stock get worn down and corroded with time. Hopefully, these new controls will solve that issue and be easier to keep clean, but it's all about trying to change things that don't work. Going back to Franz's comments about constantly working on the Model S, those changes are all for things that aren't quite perfect yet. When talking about why the Model 3 is, in Franz's view, a pretty well-designed car, he says that Tesla uses the if-it-ain't-broke-don't-fix-it mentality. Sure, they tinker with the small stuff, But unless a larger redesign is needed, Franz says the team don't regularly touch any larger parts. 
And what makes this constant design work so easy is that there are very few barriers to the design team collaborating with people in other disciplines, which Franz says is not typical of other companies he's worked at. Remember, Franz has been in the industry since 1992 and has worked for some of the biggest automotive companies out there. He says that at Tesla, there is no middle managers to go through if he needs to talk to engineers on the assembly floor. He has daily, sometimes hourly meetings with Tesla's on-site aerodynamics engineers about the design of their car bodies. So if people are wondering why Tesla makes such solid designs, Franz says that's the reason. Going with that though, Franz was asked why Tesla didn't keep a unified design language for their vehicles. Most other car companies go to great lengths to make sure that they have a recognizable body shape or silhouette, which helps mark them from their competitors. Tesla's four main vehicles do have a recognizable shape language, but then you throw in a Cybertruck and things get weird pretty fast. Franz explains that this is done on purpose. Tesla wants to make sure that new designs are being produced by their world-class team without restrictions. How else would something like the Cybertruck come from the same company that made the Model S? That's why when there was some discussion of the potential for a cyber line of vehicles, like maybe a van and a car, using the same angular steel construction, Franz seemed to pan the idea. It's not like they hadn't thought of it, but there are other designs that might work better in places like China. And that brings us to the design centers in both Berlin and Shanghai, which point to another reason for a lack of continuous design language at Tesla, localization. Use cases for vehicles are different depending on environment and culture. So Tesla wants to eventually be able to have vehicle designs that reflect those differences. They want Asian designed vehicles in Asia and European ones for Europe. Maintaining a tight grip on design language would make that difficult for no good reason. Throughout the interview, Franz was consistent in his tone. Sure, we did get some confirmation on things the community was wondering about, like the Cybertruck scratch resistance or newer paint colors potentially coming to North America. Franz says the new colors are really pretty up close, by the way. And we got little moments where McCaffrey got some stern no comments from Franz as he bumped up against questions like, is the Model 3 redesign going to include a structural battery pack? But what we really got with this interview is a look inside the philosophy that makes Tesla tick. Their design team is integrated directly into almost every other team in the company worldwide. That level of flexibility is what keeps them ahead in their field. Franz said in the interview that Tesla's big focus is improving the manufacturability of their vehicles, right down to shortening the time between design and production itself. Every time he answered a question about where the designs for a vehicle were going, it was always with that in mind. If Franz and his team are representative of the other teams at Tesla, then it's really no wonder why they're as innovative as we've seen. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.